just to ease my pain, I just ended up canceling my bank account with Deutsche Bank because I wasn't happy with the fees I was paying anyway. Guten Morgen, guten Abend, whatever time of the day it is for you. My name is Jenna. I have been living in Germany since 2014 and I've been documenting my journeys along the way, whether that's an awesome experience or a huge bump in the road. If you're watching this video, you probably already know that getting started in Germany can be tough and the rumors are true. There is an immense amount of paperwork for most of what you're going to need to get done in order to get started here in Germany. Although there is one thing that is relatively easy and that is opening up a bank account here in germany however there are still a number of things that you should probably know before you get started before you open up a bank account here in germany and i know that a number of you watching this probably already have in your mind which bank account you would like to open but there are of course pros and cons to every single bank account and the options and services that they provide but before we talk about any bank specifically i'm just going to go through a few things that you should probably know before you even open up that bank account so depending on where you're coming from you might be used to having physical branches and having online communication with your bank in the same bank I find that in Germany, it tends to be either or, and that's not to say that the branch locations don't have their own apps. Some of the banks do have their own apps and online communication services. However, they're usually not up to par with the ones that are solely online. So before you even make your choice, make sure that you know whether having a branch location is so important to you or is it more important to get those services online. For expats and internationals coming and moving here to Germany, usually the online services are your best option. That is because while they do speak English in a lot of bank branches, it's just a lot easier online to have everything in English and to manage everything in English. And they usually, depending on the bank account, have quite an extensive customer service that will all speak English, sometimes even numerous other languages as well. One thing that constantly surprises me is that a lot of people coming to Germany don't actually know that you can open up a bank account here in Germany without actually being here already. And that is usually a huge relief and a huge weight off your shoulders for many of you guys because getting a bank account is so important to actually starting the whole process to moving in. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking, yeah, for sure, I totally get that because if you're already in the stages of getting settled and getting started here in Germany, then you're also going to know that without that bank account, you're not going to be able to get paid with the job that you found. You're not going to be able to pay your rent. Sometimes you need that bank account to get a phone plan. Sometimes you need it to pay your electricity bills, your internet bills. It just depends on what companies you're with for all of these different services. But a lot of them still only allow payment with a debit card. And so without that international credit card opportunity, you're stuck not being able to move further in your move to Germany when you don't have that European bank account set up already. So the trick to doing this is that while the banks don't really promote setting up your bank account overseas, it can be done. And that's because they require a valid European address because they need to be able to send your bank card somewhere here in Europe. And if you have an address, you can actually send the card to your final address already and a lot of the banking can already be done online so having that actual physical card shouldn't be that big of a problem when you first get started because you should already be able to transfer money over to your online bank and get everything set up and ready to go so that valid european address they're asking for your house address but if you don't have a house address perhaps you could ask your airbnb or your hotel or a friend that you already know who's over here if they can accept that package for you which includes your bank card and then you'll easily be able to get started it's not a huge pain just to change your address when you do get here and when you actually have an address to input into the system it's just an address to send your bank card to one of the most confusing things for internationals first moving here to germany is that you'll hear a number of different terms when it comes to a debit card and that could be an ec card, a maestro card it could also be a giro conto and the most important thing to know is that 
All of these are relatively the same. It's all under the debit card <laughs> brand. It's just different terms that they use at different times. But the most important thing to know is that these are not credit cards. A lot of the banks that you might be considering right now will actually offer you an additional credit card, whether that's a Visa or a MasterCard. Uh, but these debit cards can be called either Maestro card, Giro Conto, Itse Karte, but all of them are debit cards. So these will be used in addition to your credit card. So I run a community group here in Dusseldorf of over 10,000 internationals here living in the city. And one of my biggest pet peeves is when somebody is new to the city and they first get here and they ask the question, which is the best bank account for an expat and which one should I get? And I do have a blog post that includes six of the best expat banks. And that is just simply a rating from what everybody else has said, what their favorite was in order. However, I always tell people the worst thing you can do is ask in a community Facebook group, which expat bank is best for you. And that is because so many of us are different. Some of us are cheaper than others. Some of us require different services than others. You know, it all depends on who you are and what you need. And so the better question would be, you know, I'm a student and I can't afford a, an expensive monthly bill from a bank. Can you please let me know which one is the best free bank or something along those lines? Or I don't mind paying for my bank account. I just really want to make sure that I have service A and service B readily available for me. So making this question a lot more specific is going to get you a lot better answers and you'll be able to better pick the bank that's best for you as i mentioned you've probably already got a few in your mind but i'll go through a few of the most popular ones so that you can get a better understanding at what i mean by they're all different right and so Number one would be N26. Probably all of you watching this right now have heard about N26, whether that was something good or something bad. N26, I find to be a fantastic bank for expats, especially if you do not want to pay a monthly fee for your card. However, some of you might have also heard that N26 was involved in a scandal that got them in trouble with the GDPR regulations. And that's because apparently they were selling their customers information um, in order to be able to offer these services for free. So that has now stopped. And well, as shady as that was, uh, N26 still is a relatively good bank for expats. They do have 24 seven customer support in English, which I find awesome. Some people say it's hard to get in touch with them because there are so many people registered for this free bank account. But if you're looking for a free card and you're patient, then I'd see absolutely nothing wrong with signing up for an N26 bank account. On the other hand, you've got online banks like Bunk, which is very similar in the sense that they have 24 seven customer support in multiple different languages. You can run the entire app in English. However, Bunk is different from N26 in the sense that you do pay a monthly fee. Usually it's around eight euros per month, depending on what account you'd like to open, but they offer a lot more services. For example, they give you the opportunity to open, I think up to 25 different sub accounts. So you can actually divide all of your expenses. Like I have an account for my rent. I have an account for entertainment, for travel, for savings, whatever that might be. You can really just open and close these accounts as you wish so that it's all nice and organized. And for someone like me, that's something that's really important. And that's something that I'd probably pay a service fee for. They also do neat little things like you can opt in to have every purchase you make rounded up to the nearest dollar. And then that rounded up leftover money actually gets added into a savings account that you don't touch. And then you end up with a whole lot of money at the end of the month. So that's also a cool little feature. And these are the things that you're going to get when you choose to pay monthly for a bank account somewhere online. Another online bank that has been praised and loved by Germans and expats alike is DKB and they are run in German. So if you don't mind learning German, I'll actually link a video up here for you that you can check out that you should definitely watch before you get started learning German. But DKB is an online German bank. You'll have to do the application in German, but a little Google Translate does not hurt. There's also other ones like Comdirect, which is also very similar to DKB and also very well loved in Germany and within the expat communities, but run in German. And both of these banks are free and very reputable. So if you're not going the N26 route, 
You can also go with Ticabe or Comdirect, which have perhaps more reputable recommendations, but they're run in the German language. So it's all totally up to what you're comfortable with and what you'd like to sign up for. But as I mentioned, if having a branch location is important to you, there are also other banks like Commerzbank or Deutsche Bank or Sparkasse, where they all have branch locations. I should probably mention though that I'm finding year after year here in Germany, there are less and less branch locations for all of these different banks. So perhaps we're moving entirely into the online world. I'm not quite sure, but if having a branch location is important to you, then you can consider a bank like that. I went with Deutsche Bank when I first got here because they did have English services and English speaking reps at the branch location, which I found to be extremely important. But when I arrived, I realized that while they did speak English, they weren't really uh, happy about speaking English. And I totally appreciate the fact that I'm in Germany and I should be speaking German and I really feel for all of the Germans that get frustrated when everybody's speaking English and expecting others to speak English. However, I signed up for this bank account at Deutsche Bank because I knew that they spoke English and I knew they were comfortable speaking English. So when I got there and she was like, mm, nee, ich glaube, du kannst schon Deutsch reden, das ist in Ordnung. <laughs> I was like, well, I could speak German, but in a case like this, when it's banking and I always find that Sometimes I miss a couple things when I'm speaking German because either somebody's speaking too fast and then, yes, I could just say, um, sorry, could you just stop for a second and repeat that so I can better understand it? But I'm always just so overwhelmed at the point in time and then I think like, oh, now they think I speak really good German, so I feel like I should just pretend that I understand what they're saying. And it's just my mind messing with me. But I just get so nervous that I forget to ask them what they said or I just am too scared to ask them to repeat themselves because I don't want them to think that this meeting is like the most frustrating meeting they've ever had. So just to ease my pain, I just ended up canceling my bank account with Deutsche Bank because I wasn't happy with the fees I was paying anyway. And I would much rather just go with an online bank like Bank and pay the eight euros, which was a lot cheaper than what I was paying with Deutsche Bank and getting a lot more services that are also in English. I will include links to all of the banks that I've mentioned below, but as I mentioned, make sure you compare them for yourself and you can ask on any group or anywhere in any community or online forum what the best bank is, but just please, for your own sake, make sure that you ask a more specific question because as soon as you say, what's the best bank, a lot of people have N26 because it's the free bank, you know? And in a lot of community groups, that's just the first thing people say is N26 because that's what they have and that's what they know. So make your question more specific so that you know what's better for you. And don't forget, if you wanna sign up for a bank account, you're likely going to need a form of identification you're going to need a European address. You're gonna need a filled out application form that is often done online, but if it's a branch location, you could also do it via mail. And you're probably gonna to have to make a deposit from one of your bank accounts in your home country to your new European bank account. I'll also link a blog post below that I wrote about, about the different transfer options that you have because I went through every single transfer option when I was moving here and transferring all of my money from Canada over to Germany because I wanted to see what is really the best transfer option. So I go through and I compare them all in that blog post. So check that out. If you do have to send your money over, trust me, you'll thank me later. And if you're signing up for an online bank, you might actually be able to do that identification process with your passport online. They're done relatively quickly. You usually wait in line and then you have your passport ready and you just hold it up and they scan it through and you answer a couple questions and then they can officially confirm your identification and open up your bank account. If all of this is absolutely driving you bonkers and it's just too much and you don't know when to sign up for what and when you need to sign up for that, then join me over in the welcome program. I've included the link below in this video description and we go through from start to finish everything you need to get done step by step. I literally go through and help you fill out every form. So check it out if you haven't yet. And I won't go into more detail about banking than I need to. If you have absolutely any questions, just ask me in the comment section below or feel free to send me an email. Thank you so, so much for watching yet again. If you love this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to click on that bell notification to receive any updates that are coming your way. That is all for me. Vielen lieben Dank, bis später und viel Spaß.